For many years, Blue Origin's New Shepherd program has been mostly known for taking wealthy customers on short suborbital flights, a few minutes above the atmosphere before returning to Earth. It became a symbol of the early space tourism market, with tickets aimed at high net worth individuals. But the most recent mission, NS35, signals that the company is adjusting its priorities. Rather than focusing only on selling brief passenger trips, Blue Origin is increasingly using New Shepard as a dedicated vehicle for scientific and research purposes. This change could play a significant role in how the company positions itself against SpaceX in the years ahead. In its earlier years, New Shepard got attention by sending famous passengers, such as Jeff Bezos and Katy Perry, on quick journeys above the Karman line. While these celebrity flights drew global headlines, they contributed little to practical space exploration. Occasionally, however, New Shepard was used in a way that pushed the boundaries of research. A notable example is the NS-29 mission in February 2025. During that flight, the capsule's reaction control system was used to spin it at a rate of 11 revolutions per minute. This created a simulated lunar gravity environment, about one-sixth of Earth's gravity, for nearly two full minutes. That duration is far longer than the roughly 20 seconds of reduced gravity achievable in standard parabolic aircraft flights. The data from NS-29 provided NASA with valuable insights for its Artemis program, which aims to return astronauts to the moon. Fast forward to August 23, 2025. The NS-35 mission flew more than 40 research payloads, with 24 of them coming from NASA's TechRise Student Challenge. This allowed students to run experiments in suborbital space. With this flight, New Shepard's total number of payloads passed 200. That is a clear sign the program is becoming an accessible platform for space-based research, not just tourism. Experiments from institutions like Johns Hopkins Applied Physics Laboratory, Oklahoma State University, and the University of Florida took advantage of over three minutes of microgravity time during NS-35. For this mission, Blue Origin used its dedicated payload capsule, paired with the newest New Shepard booster. This was the same combination that flew NS-29, linking the two missions as part of an ongoing effort to expand the vehicle's research capabilities. The NS-35 mission reflects a deliberate strategy by Blue Origin. The company is working to balance two sides of the New Shepard program, tourism and science. Tourism flights bring in high revenue and media attention. Science flights bring credibility, attract partnerships, and open the door to government contracts. For example, in 2021, Jeff Bezos revealed that nearly $100 million worth of tickets had been sold. One seat was auctioned for $28 million, while regular prices are estimated at around $1.3 million per passenger. Tourism doesn't just make money from ticket sales, it also benefits local economies. Passengers and their guests spend money on travel, lodging, and training in areas near the West Texas launch site. This revenue supports the cost of running the program and funds research flights. Still, tourism alone cannot fully pay for more advanced scientific work. That's why partnerships with NASA and other agencies are essential. NASA-backed payloads under its Flight Opportunities Program might pay between $50,000 and $100,000 per slot, depending on the complexity of the experiment. NASA's collaboration with Blue Origin has brought real technical value to the New Shepard program. For example, the agency has used New Shepard flights to test advanced systems like SPLICE, a precision landing technology designed to help spacecraft touch down accurately on other worlds. Every one of these research missions produces data that Blue Origin can use to refine future vehicle designs and improve performance. This steady, incremental progress is helping the company move beyond its earlier reputation as just a space tourism provider. The more scientific work that New Shepard carries out, the stronger Blue Origin's position becomes in the commercial space sector. Milestones such as the Extended Lunar Gravity Simulation Experiment or missions carrying large numbers of research payloads add a layer of credibility and prestige. This scientific reputation doesn't just benefit Blue Origin's relationship with research institutions, it also boosts the appeal of its tourism service.
Potential passengers may see greater value in buying a ticket if they know the same spacecraft has been used for cutting-edge experiments instead of purely leisure trips. Beyond the vehicles themselves, Blue Origin is strategic in how it times its launches. The company has a history of scheduling New Shepard flights in close proximity to high-profile SpaceX events, ensuring they remain part of the broader spaceflight conversation. A recent example was the NS-35 launch on August 23, 2025, just one day before SpaceX's much-anticipated Starship Flight 10. Earlier in the same year, Blue Origin's first New Glenn launch took place on the exact day as a Starship test, drawing attention and making sure their name stayed in the headlines alongside their main competitor. There are practical explanations for why Blue Origin's launch dates sometimes fall so close to major SpaceX missions. Factors like the readiness of the payload, crew schedules, or favorable weather windows all play a role. However, from a promotional perspective, there's a clear benefit to launching within days, or even hours, of a highly anticipated SpaceX event. Doing so allows Blue Origin to capture some of the public's attention before news outlets and social media feeds are dominated by Starship or Falcon 9 updates. It also reinforces the ongoing Musk-Bezos rivalry in the public eye, subtly tying Blue Origin's name to its larger competitors' high-profile moments. On top of that, New Shepard's record of consistent mission success adds credibility to whatever story they want to tell around those flights. Blue Origin has also demonstrated a knack for turning controversy into publicity. A notable example was the NS-31 mission in April 2025, promoted as the first all-female crewed spaceflight since 1963. The passengers included public figures such as singer Katy Perry, with the mission organized by journalist Lauren Sanchez. While critics claimed the trip was more of a luxury spectacle than a contribution to space research, it generated massive media coverage. Celebrity social media posts, online debates, and the timing, coinciding with Women's History Month, helped the flight gain strong cultural relevance. In the end, the mission drew millions of views online, became a trending topic, and almost certainly boosted public awareness of Blue Origin, if not ticket sales as well. Looking ahead, it's likely that Blue Origin will keep developing New Shepard as a platform serving both research and tourism. We could see expanded NASA collaborations, increased payload capacity per flight, and a steady stream of experiments. On the tourism side, the company may shift toward fewer flights that focus on high-profile guests or special occasions, creating an aura of exclusivity. Meanwhile, New Shepard will likely remain a valuable test platform for systems intended for New Glenn until the larger rocket enters regular service. By the latter half of the 2020s, Blue Origin may position New Shepard as more than just a suborbital tourism vehicle. It could play an active role in astronaut training, helping prepare crews for future orbital or even lunar missions. The spacecraft could also be used to test equipment in a microgravity environment before it is sent on more expensive and higher-risk missions. However, this kind of dual use will require precise scheduling so the vehicle can meet the needs of both paying tourists and research customers. If public interest in suborbital tourism declines, the company might choose to focus more heavily on science-focused missions. A hybrid model, where a single flight carries both human passengers and scientific payloads, could be a practical way to maximize efficiency and revenue while serving multiple markets at once. To remain attractive to agencies like NASA, controlling and potentially lowering the cost of flying research payloads will be a key factor. New Shepard's design gives it a strong advantage in this area, as its high rate of reusability and relatively low maintenance requirements help keep operational costs down. From a promotional standpoint, it is likely Blue Origin will continue its strategy of aligning flights with major space-related events. These could be the company's own milestones or those of other major players in the industry. For example, Coordinating a New Shepard mission close to the timeline of NASA's planned Artemis III moon landing in 2027 would allow Blue Origin to remain part of the broader spaceflight conversation and keep its vehicle in the spotlight. The NS-35 mission makes it clear that New Shepard is no longer just about selling short trips to space. 
Blue Origin is positioning the vehicle as a flexible, reusable platform that can serve both human passengers and scientific research. If this strategy continues, the company could become a more serious competitor to SpaceX, not by matching it rocket for rocket, but by owning a unique niche in suborbital science and tourism.